Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa, I read and welcome to my channel and today I am recommending books that I've read so far from 2022. So I already posted a video, the best books I've read so far in 2022, so I have a whole recommendation video already there for you, but these are the other books that I've read this year that I haven't quite given a 5 star, but I still really enjoyed, um, and I gave them a 4 star rating. And I don't have a huge list here, but I have enough for a video, so I thought I would film this for you, and um, otherwise I wouldn't be able to get a chance to talk about these books. Even though they're not quite 5 stars, they're a 4 star read, they're solid read, and maybe you would really love them. So let's just get on with the list. So I'm going to start with the contemporaries first. The first one is a romance, and it's called This Is is Crazy by Natasha Madison. This is a hockey romance and it's not my first one but it's my second one and I've learned that I really like hockey romances. They're a lot of fun. I've really gotten into hockey this past year with the playoffs. Edmonton was there for a little while. Um, didn't quite make it but this one we're following Zara and Evan and Zara is considered like a hockey um, royalty because her father is in what was it her father is a hockey god apparently her brother's in the industry and so is her brother-in-law so she is part of the hockey family but she's always promised herself not to actually date a hockey player because she knows what they're like and so she's anticipating her boyfriend to propose to her but instead he dumps her and she's devastated. Several months later she finds out her previous ex-boyfriend is engaged and she is furious and so out of the blue, she kind of texts this hockey player named Evan Richards. He's doing really well um, in the industry. He's kind of the big buzz in NHL currently. And she texts him, or t no, she tweets him. That's what she does, kind of like a publicity stunt. And I think he, she asks him to take her to her um, ex-boyfriend's wedding or something like that as her date. And so that is how the relationship begins. She's a little bit off limits because of her family being in the industry. And so I really loved it. I just loved how smitten he was with her. And like they weren't sure at first, but they grew to really fall for each other. And there was this whole question of like how to make it work because he is playing hockey all the time. And I think they both live in different cities. Um, but I really like this one and it's part of a series so there's other books um, in the series that maybe one day I'll get to. So the next one is a contemporary and that is Someday, Someday Maybe by Lauren Graham. So this is not a romance. I would consider this like a woman's fiction but I really liked it a lot and I listened to this on audio and Lauren Graham herself narrates it. So Lauren Graham is the actress from Gilmore Girls and Zoe's Playlist and everything and so this is her book and it's very like highly influenced by her life and I really liked that because I felt like I was hearing her story um, even though I'm sure there's a lot of liberties that she takes with this story but it felt like maybe her origin story of how she got into the industry and how hard it was um, to be an actress during her time so it's set in New York and it's like the 90s and she's trying to make it as an actress and she set herself a deadline she said, okay, I have this many years to try and make it in the industry and her um, deadline's coming up. So it's about her working, trying to find work, about her living with her roommates and just the life in New York in general and her finally maybe catching a break. And I just really liked it. There's a little bit of a romance, but not really. Kind of a love triangle, kind of not really. It's more about her working in the industry, the jobs that she takes, the people that she meets, and just trying to make it. And it's it was really interesting. So I do recommend it, and I do recommend listening to it because she narrates it and she's great. Fanny is basically Lauren Graham, like, verbatim. <laughs> like, like, to the dot, like, Fanny, that's her name, Fanny Banks, is basically Lauren Graham. So if you like Lauren Graham, you would for sure enjoy this story. The next one I have is actually a short story. I picked it up on a whim because I needed like a palate cleanser. It is a historical romance and it's called In the Spinster's Bed by Sally McKenzie. I think it might be 0 0.5. I don't remember but I think it's part of a series but it was just like a one-off. It didn't matter what order you read it. You can just read it as it is. It's a standalone and we're following Annabelle and Lord William. So Annabelle and Lord William have a past. They were actually lovers when they were like teenagers. They really loved each other and they had 
a moment, an intimate moment that they shouldn't have out of wedlock, like neither of them were married, but they were really in love with each other. And so they had this moment and there were consequences. Unfortunately, Annabelle did get pregnant and it ruined her. She is the vicar's daughter of all people too. And so he didn't know because he was off at university. And so she um, kind of ran away to a neighboring town. And there is this house called a spinster's house where any woman can live there. Um, and there was a living attached to it. And so she lived there, had the baby, I think. No, I don't think she had the baby. I think she actually miscarried miscarried the baby but she lived there because she was ruined and there was a library in this town and she ran the library and so that was her life and Lord William never came back into her life ever again and her father disowned her so many years later he is been married and he runs away to this town because his wife has been a very scandalous woman who has um, endless affairs and very scandalous affairs with people um, and so she's constantly in the news and so he runs away because she has done another scandalous thing and he's running away from the gossip and so he finds this town and he stumbles upon Annabeth and it's about their rekindled relationship and how they fall for each other again and I did really really like it a lot it gets super dramatic <laughs> Just a warning, it was very surprising like how dramatic it got, like several people died. Like I think three to four people die in this story and it's not like you don't see it happening. It was more like talked about. The deaths help move the plot along, does that make sense? But like afterwards I remember thinking, wow, that was a lot of people dying for a short story. But I really liked their relationship and how they found each other again and just fell in love and made it work so I do recommend it. Now I'm going to move on to two series. I started the Wallflower series by Lisa Claypest so I read the first one which is Secrets of a Summer Night and I also read It Happened One Autumn. So the first one we're following Annabelle, another Ella, Annabelle, um, but we're following Annabelle, Peyton, and Simon Hunt and the concept of the series is that there's these four wallflowers. So a wallflower is a girl who doesn't really get asked at the dance or like ball I should say to dance and things like that and they're kind of looked over at the parties and by the men of society and they find it really hard to find a man um, to marry and which is really important in these this time era so it's like Regency Victorian era time that this is set in so these four wallflowers decide to make a pact together to try and get each other married and help each other out because they're all struggling and they develop this really nice, wonderful relationship. They all love each other and they're all very different and unique. Um, and this one is Annabelle and she's very beautiful. And the only reason why she's finding it hard to marry is because she has no dowry. So there's no one who really wants to marry her because they don't get anything out of it. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's what it was like back then. So they decide to help her. She's the oldest and so that's how they pick <laughs> the order to help each other out. This is the story between her and Simon Hunt. Simon is a self-made man. He made a lot of money doing businesses. I think he's a butcher's son. And so the fact that he is new money, everyone looks down upon him because he's not old money. That's just the way it was. Um, and he's always had his sights on Annabelle, but she didn't. But it kind of turns out that maybe she was always intrigued by him, but pushed him away maybe because she likes him. It was a really cute romance. I do definitely recommend it. And then the next one is It Happened One Autumn, and this is following Lillian um, Bowman and Lord Marcus. And Lillian and her sister, I think her sister's name is Daisy, they're actually American. And so her family moved, I don't think they moved, but they all came over to um, the UK in order to find them husbands. They found it really hard to find husbands in the US and I forget why, but the mother likes the idea of them getting titles and everything like that. So they are here in the UK to try and find husbands for the daughters and Lillian is very like outspoken and 
really improper. She doesn't follow the etiquette of the society, the peerage society. She always butts head with Lord Marcus, who is very prim and proper. I think he's a Viscount, and it's their relationship. It's like a hate to love ro um, romance but clearly he has feelings for her and it was really cute. I really enjoyed this one as well. Next, we're moving on to the last series I'm gonna talk about, which is The Rule of Scoundrels by Sarah McLean. This is the first one, A Rogue by Any Other Name. And the other one is One Good Earl Deserves a Lover. So this one is actually, I picked it up because it's a Hades and Persephone retelling and I really love Hades and Persephone stories. So I really wanted to read this. That's a setback. We're following Penny and Born, Marquess of Born. This is actually like a second chance romance or like friends to lovers kind of. They grew up together as neighbors and they were really good friends as children. Um, and he went, once he went away to college, they lost touch with each other. And I think his father dies and then he gets the he inherits everything but then he gets really wild and he accidentally gambles everything to another neighbor their neighbor's son is actually one of their friends as well and so ever since then they've lost touch but penny has always written to him and she endlessly written to him and you could tell that she's Maybe she's always had feelings for him, but one day he just stops writing back, but she continues endlessly. Penny, she can't seem to find a husband. She's been really struggling. She has been proposed to a lot, but it just never worked out. The first proposal was the biggest disappointment because her fiance decided to break the engagement because he was in love with someone else. And so ever since then, she's just hasn't quite found the right person. And then eventually Michael comes back into her life. He comes back to the state and he actually kidnaps her because her father got part of his estate. I think maybe all of it, I can't remember why, but he has the estate and he decides to add it to her dowry and so Michael, that's his name, Michael Bourne, he decides to whisk her away and make her his bride in order so he can have his estate back because he's always been devastated by the fact that he lost the estate during that gambling incident. So he is a self-made mad again though because he opened a gaming hell with three other people. It's called The Fallen Angel. Very scandalous that he runs a gaming hell. And so it's about Penn falling for him, this arranged marriage, and the struggles in their marriage. Michael is really awful to Penn at first, a lot. And it was kind of hard to read sometimes. Um, I still really, really like this and I found it super addicting, but it's a different Hades and Persephone story than I was originally thinking it would be. It's very much like a redemption story. Like he is very um, damaged emotionally, obviously, and he is really hardened. He definitely softens along the way, but I do really recommend it and I did really like it. And then the second one I loved even more, and that one is the One Good Earl Deserves a Lover. So we're following the other owner of this gaming hell. His name is Cross. He's an Earl, but he kind of ran away from his title and his responsibilities because of his past. And he is a person of science. He really, he's really smart. He's really good at numbers. He does like all the accounts at the gaming hell. And this is the relationship with Pippa, who is, is that the sister? Yeah, I think she is Penn's sister, um, Penelope's sister. And she is very different. She's very, very smart. She loves biology. She um, understands the anatomy of the human body really well. And she likes growing like she's a herbologist as well she grows um plants in her like greenhouse and things like that and she's just so interested in everything and she's extremely smart and she's engaged to someone else and she's really nervous about um certain aspects of the marriage <laughs> specifically the physical side and so she decides to come to cross and ask him to teach her the ways of husbands and wives and she, he does not like this idea at first because she is um Michael Bourne's sister-in-law and he knows that he would not be happy with this situation and he tries to reject her over and over again but he eventually wears down because he himself ends up falling for her and I love this one so much um I would have given it five stars but I still had 
some problems near the end, but I really love them as a couple. I just like couldn't get over them. There were some really romantic moments in the story as well, and so I definitely recommend it. That one is my favorite so far in this series. Um, I hope I like the other ones too. There's two more in the series, but yeah, that is it. I think those are all the books I recommend that I've read so far in 2022. Um, I would love to know if there's any books that you recommend as well. Please leave them down below if you want to share some recommendations that you've read this year. If you've read any of these books, I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions about them. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you're not done so. You can follow me on Goodreads and Instagram. And you know what? I want you to keep reading. Bye.